We do everything in our life trying to get the glory. Yeah. Whether you realize it or not, peer pressure yeah. is about somebody trying to get glory either for themselves to make themselves feel better yeah. about themselves yeah. by taking glory away from somebody else. Yeah. They try to get themselves glory. You know when somebody talk about you, they trying to get themselves glory, don't you? Yeah. They trying to make themselves feel big. They trying to make themselves feel better. And they feel about putting you down. Yeah. And they glorify themselves. Look at that word glory. In the Hebrew context, it also means beauty. It also means honor. It also means an ornament. And I saw that word ornament. Of course, the first thing I thought about was Christmas. Whenever you have your Christmas tree, what do you do? You make sure you get ornaments to put on the tree. And do you not understand what that word ornament means in the Latin? The word ornament means to adorn. And it made me think about the five brides. Remember the Bible used to say five were wise and five were foolish, but they had to adorn themselves in preparation for the bridegroom. And that word ornament also means when you look at adorn, adorn means to dress. And what do we do to put glory to ourselves? We want to make sure we look good. And something about our people show sure enough. When we step out, we going to make sure we look good. We even ask the question, baby, how do I look before we go out of the house? And if the man don't say, baby, you look good. Oh, the baby and the wife going to say, well, I need to put something else on. Because what I got on is not making you say anything. Even the men, when they look at their wife, they stand up and wait for the wife to say, don't I look good? They want to put on glory to make themselves feel better. The beautiful, magnificent splendor. You understand why he said ornament means and glory means dress. Because you remember what happened? Remember when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, what happened? The Bible made a specific reference that said God put them in the garden and they had everything. But he said once they ate of the tree, what did Adam say when God said, Adam, where are you? And he said, Adam, where are you? He said, well, Lord, why didn't you answer me, Adam? He said, well, Lord, because I was naked. You ever wonder why he said he was naked? Because once they ate of the tree, the glory was gone. God can recognize His glory. You do know that, don't you? When God's glory is upon you, He can see His glory. When His glory is taken away, He knows when it's gone. When it comes to glory, the world has a flawed opinion. The world looks at glory in terms of appearance or or something that is put on. Mm -hmm. However, we must realize and understand that the glory is not an artificial appearance. The glory is an eternal essence. You you, you know what that means? That's why the old for you to say what we talked about this morning. This little light of mine, the glory is a light that God puts in you. Shines from you. Yeah. Uh, just to make a point, these light bulbs and these, and, and, and these lights this morning that you're looking at, yeah. Yeah. you see the light coming from them, but you know where the light is coming from? The light not coming from the outside. The light is coming from the beam that's inside of the bulb. Yeah. The bulb is just an outside covering containing the light. So you are like that bulb. You're an outside covering containing the light. And when you receive Jesus Christ again as your Savior, you know what you get back? You get the glory back. That's why God recognizes you as His child because the glory that was lost when you received Jesus, you got it back. The glory as we said is not something you can put on. The glory is born in. You never remember what what Jesus told Nicodemus? Nicodemus said, well, Lord, what do I need? He said, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. What I'm talking about, you can't put it on in a dress or in a robe. You got to be born again. The glory is not a human guise. The glory is a heavenly gift. You can't get glory at the store. (laughs) Tell me what store you can go to today and find glory. You're not going to find it on the shelf. You can go to the produce market. You're not going to find no fruit called glory. You can go to the stores and say, let me, show me where your soup called glory is. I want to buy a glory soup. You can't buy glory. The only way you can get glory is heaven got to give you glory. Glory is not of goods. The glory is of God. 
Elijah and Moses. You, you notice the three that they saw, don't you? And they said they looked and they saw a glorious light and they clothes shine and it was white as snow. They saw the glory of God around all three of them. And when they saw it, they said it's good for us to be here. The glory comes from heaven. You can't get glory from nowhere else. Now these glory points are clarified in Holy Scripture. Proverbs 25 and 27 reveals, it says, To seek one's own glory, thank you Holy Ghost, is not glory. You know they're talking about American Idol and all the, the people say, I want to be the next idol. I want to have fame and fortune. And they're doing everything trying to get their own glory. God say, that ain't glory. What you thinking, that's just glitter. That ain't glory. And you know what glitter does. You can take glitter and put it on the clothes, but what can you do with glitter? You can also wash glitter off. You can't wash glory off. Amen. Uh, Romans 3 and 23 declares, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then 1 Chronicles 16 and 27 proclaims and says, Glory and honor are in His presence. Strength and gladness are in His place. So, in other words, if you want glory, you got to go to God to get it. If you want glory, you got to go to Jesus to get it. The only way you can get glory is when the Holy Ghost fills you up. Then you get glory. The Holy Scriptures provide us with some important information Regarding the glory. According to the Holy Word, the glory fills. The the glory shines and the glory endures. We know that the glory fills because Exodus 40, 34 and 35 says this. It says, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode their own and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. When God is in the place, can't nobody else step in and get no glory. God said, I'm not giving my glory to anybody. We know the glory shines because in Luke 2, 8 and 9 it says, And there we're in the same country. Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Y'all remember this scene, don't you? And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. When Jesus was getting ready to leave glory, he was so bright. When the angels came to tell the story and tell the shepherds that the king had been born, glory shined about them. We know that the glory endures. Because Psalms 104.31 reads, The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in His works. As we said before, you can't get rid of the glory. God is the glory. That's what it said. God is the glory. And so as we leave you this morning, The conviction, the the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ opens the window of discovery to two final points about the glory. First of all, we discovered that the glory supersedes the natural. In other words, the glory eclipsed the sun's light. The glory shrouded the moon's shine. The glory twirled the stars twinkle. If you're wondering what that means, say, well, preacher, what are you talking about? When Jesus was on the cross, they said, from the sixth to the ninth hour, the sun refused to shine. Uh, what it was, say, the earthly sun said, I can't outshine the eternal sun. The Bible says the moon refused to shine. Said, cover his face and say, I would not dare try to outshine the son of God. Because we dare not try to outshine the sun. We discovered that any attempts to corral or to contain or or counteract the glory, we're here to let you know it's going to fail. For no one or nothing can beat the brightness out of the glory. No one or nothing can entomb the essence of the glory. No one or nothing can smother out the source of the glory. Well, preacher, how do you know this to be true? What evidence do you have? Well, I remember they took Jesus down from the cross and and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And and some say they put a rock around a rock and a rock over a rock and a rock under a rock and they rolled a stone in front of him. They put soldiers to guard the man. 
son. He didn't say Emmanuel. He said, good morning, glory. Good morning, glory. And the glory heard his father alarm clock go off. And he got up off the stone and took off his grave clothes. Wrapped the band that was around his head. Took the time to fold it and set it in place. When he got up, he waited as the angel rolled away the stone. Yes, Lord. The glory yes, Lord. has risen. Yes, Lord. The glory yes, Lord. has risen. 